Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. Today we're going to have a look at the Exalux Control 1, which is a Lumen Radio DMX transmitter. On top of that, it enables you to control up to 40 uh, DMX fixtures. You can save up to 16 scenes. You can do transitions between your scenes and you can also use this to transmit Lumen Radio from a standard desk. All right, so let's have a look at how much it costs and what you get for your money. So basically the uh, Exalux uh, Control 1 is about three and a half thousand Australian dollars. Okay, so um, that's about, um, I think about two and a half thousand US dollars and under 2,000 euros. Now for that you get a, uh, you get a bag, you know, whoop de doo everything comes in a bag these days, even bags come in bags now. Okay, you get the uh, controller of course, you get a, um, a four pin to uh, D-tap because this unit will run off, um, off a four pin um, that's 10 volts to 24 volts, so don't plug a 26 volt battery into it. You get a, um, a 10,000 milliamp hour uh, USB uh, battery uh, power pack and you also get a um, USB charging hub. Okay, now this comes in very handy because the whole system including the receivers runs off uh, USB. So uh, basically, one thing I will add to this, which uh, doesn't come with it, is there's no um, screws for spigots. So mounting this to a stand isn't straightforward. Um, so what I've got is I've got an old plate that I wasn't using and I've covered it in Velcro. So I'm going to mount, um, mount that to the Exalux, then mount the battery to that. Okay. So basically plug the battery in. So this is running off the USB port. Now again, it, it will run off a V-Lock battery via the, um, via the D-Tap connector, but seriously, um, this battery here runs the unit, um, I've run it for about an eight hour day, and this only got one quarter used. So I think a, a, a V-Lock battery would probably be um, a little bit overkill. Now let's talk about the receivers. Uh, Exalux receiver costs about $550. That's Australian dollars plus uh, GST, of course. And basically with the receiver, you get a USB cable, uh, basically for powering it. So if you're running this off a sky panel, for example, you could just power it off the USB outlet. You also get a battery. So if you don't have a USB port on your light, um, you can connect the battery and uh, plug the, um, the receiver into the battery. One thing I like about the battery is it comes with a little key ring. So you can feed the uh, connector through the key ring and basically when this is mounted into your light, the, um, the, uh, the key ring here takes the strain off the cabling, okay? Now one thing I want to point out here too, is you don't have to use Exalux receivers with the Exalux transmitter. Uh, it's a Lumen radio system, so you can use um, any receiver at all, as long as it is Lumen radio. Now one thing I'll point out here is everything here has been uh, factory reset. So it's like it is when you get it out of the box brand new for the first time. So the reason I'm doing this is to show that, or to explain that a transmitter won't talk to the receivers yet. The receivers have to be locked to the transmitter. So the reason you do this um, is so that if you're on a shoot and um, maybe you're in a studio and you're using uh, this Lumen Radio system and you might have a studio next door using Lumen Radio, Basically, their uh, transmitter won't talk to your receivers and your uh, transmitter won't talk to their receivers. Basically, it's a secure system. It isolates you from everyone else. So how do you link the two together? Well, basically, um, on the top of the Exalux here, there's a link unlink button. So basically, you press that down and it'll send a signal out to all um, Lumen Radio receivers, including the ones in lights, saying that I want to connect to you assuming that they're unlinked or unconnected. So let's press the button. And as you can see, we've got some activity going on. It takes about five seconds to get a solid link. And in about another three seconds, we should have, there we go, uh, we should have signal strength indicators. If you want to use this receiver with a, another transmitter, so you've got more than one transmitter or you want to lend it to somebody else, it will have to be reset so it can be linked to their transmitter. So how you can do that is basically with uh, anything that um, uh, basically gets in the hole here and there's a reset button. So hold down the reset button for three seconds. 
and that is now unlinked. So that is ready to be linked to another receiver. Now, let's say you have a lot of receivers and you have multiple transmitters. Linking and unlinking them separately would be very painstaking and irritating. So what you can do at the end of your shoot, if you want to unlink your receivers, um, you can hold down the link unlink button for I think it's three seconds and it will unlink all of the receivers. So let's have a look at that. One, two, three, and they're all unlinked. Now if I want to link them again, I just press the link button and it will go through its linking process. All right, so let's have a play with this. So I've selected a few fixtures. I've selected the um, Aladdin fabric light uh, because that's got built-in lumen radio. So I don't need to hook up a transmitter to it. It's already built into the unit. And out of all the lights I own, that is the only one with built-in lumen radio at this point. Um, I've also selected a Nunlight Forza 500 because this thing has DMX, but it doesn't have a profile. So um, this box doesn't have a profile for it. So we're gonna have to set that up as a generic fixture. So I can run you through how to do that. And the last fixture I've selected is a RE sky panel because without a doubt, that is the most confusing light to try and hook up to DMX. That thing's got more profiles than my fiance has shoes. All right, so basically I'm gonna use the most complicated light to show how simple this thing is to use. Okay, so before we start talking about uh, the functionality, let's have a look at the top. There are a few buttons I haven't mentioned. So we've got a blackout button. So basically any light that's hooked up to the controller will black out when you hit the blackout button. We've got a uh, on off and screen off button. So basically you can turn the screen off and save some battery life. Okay, the next uh, button across is a keypad lock. So you hold that down for a few seconds and it locks the screen out, locks all the buttons and functionality out. Now one thing I like about Exalux, handy little tips on screen. Hold the button to unlock. Okay, so basically it tells you what to do. Uh, the last couple of buttons, um, link, unlink, which we've already discussed, and also CRMX on and off. So basically that turns the transmitter on and off, which can save you a little bit of battery. Okay, so let's go to the main menu. Basically this thing is not just a controller, it has a whole stack of apps. So we've got a fader app, fixture app, player, recorder, and transmission app. So let's have a look at the fader app first, because that's the most uh, basic thing to talk about. Okay, so we'll go to that. Now, currently, uh, the only light I've got hooked up is um, the Aladdin. So that's hooked up on channels one and two. So basically, channel one is brightness, okay? And channel two is the CCT. Now, it's a pretty straightforward, nothing groundbreaking there. Okay, so we've got a master controller, which basically fades everything up and down. And we've got our individual sliders, a bit like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a primitive desk. Now, on the unit, the knob on this side controls the master, okay? The knob on the other side controls your individual faders. Now, you can select your faders by clicking on them, by pressing on them by finger, and you'll know it's selected because there's a little white indicator underneath. So now I can, use, uh, can select that channel. Now, if you don't want to touch the screen because you've got clumsy fingers like I do, you can use the buttons, uh, the knobs on top, to select what channel. Basically, the one on the right, when you press that down, it toggles right. The one on the left toggles left. Okay, so you can basically select the channel you want to adjust without having to touch anything. Now, the buttons on the outside here, the eight buttons, they're for saving. So you can save scenes. You can save eight scenes per app. Okay, so uh, if we want to save to setting number one, basically hold one down and it'll come up with saved. The unit also vibrates like a mobile phone, so you can actually feel that it's, uh, that it's done a save. Okay, now uh, we, can do a, we can change our settings here. And if I wanna go back to what we had saved, I'll just press one and we're back there. Now, uh, just to illustrate, I've also saved something to number two, I've saved something to number three and back to one. Very quickly, one thing I forgot to mention on the fader app is there's a picture of a light globe in the top right hand corner you press that and every channel goes to full blast. Now the last thing to talk about in the slider app is you can select and deselect the channels that the master operates. So down the bottom here, you've got a choice of none or all, and you can individually select the channels you wanna turn off. So if they've got a red line above the channel number, they're um, operating via the master. 
if you press them and the red line disappears, they're not operating on the master anymore. So I'll just show you why we'll do that. So channel two here is the CCT on the Aladdin light. So if I drop it down the bottom, it'll go to tungsten. If I put it up the top, it's daylight. Now, if I've got this assigned to the master, when I do a master fade, as my light fades, my CCT will also change because it's still assigned to channel two. Now, if I don't want my CCT to change as I dim, basically I deselect that channel and now I can do a fade to black without my CCT changing. One thing I love about the Aladdins is look how smooth they dim. Okay, so let's get into the fixture app. Before I go too much further, we've got 40 fixtures that we can control. Okay, 40 fixtures. Now, one thing I'm gonna point out here is at this point in time, you can't actually name the fixtures. So you can't call it uh, key light, fill light, backlight, background. That is gonna happen in the very next firmware update. They're on top of that, so they're getting that sorted out. Because 40 fixtures numbered one to 40 is very confusing. Okay, so we've got fixture one selected. Let's uh, press setup. Now here you've got enable, disable a fixture. Okay, so um, you can have enable to select a fixture. And if you wanna take that fixture out later, you press disable and it disappears out of the setup. Now, once again, the XLUX is telling us how to drive it. So basically, this section here, this wheel can help you select. So basically, that's your brand selection. Okay, so there's quite a lot of brands in here. I'll just do a quick scroll through. Quite a few. And uh, again here, the XLUX is telling us that this knob here controls the selection once you've selected your brand. Okay, so um, the first light we're gonna put in is the Aladdin. So let's go down to Aladdin. Uh, this one's a fabric light, but I'm gonna select, um, not the fabric light, uh, where are we? Because the fabric light has the wrong CCT value. Now I've got a sneaking suspicion why this has got the wrong CCT value. I think that's because they got it off the Aladdin website, which is also wrong. So um, I'm gonna select the Biflex, because that's closer. Okay, hit done, okay. And as you saw, that just took over. And this is assigned to channels one and two because they were the first available channels. All right, so we've got one slider here that's controlling our CCT and the other one is controlling our intensity. Okay, so pretty, pretty straightforward. So again, I can use the knob to control my CCT. Okay, uh, press the buttons to toggle and now I can control my intensity. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Let's add another fixture. So let's add the Forza 500. Now the Forza 500 does not have a profile that is in this unit yet. It is on their to-do list, but it's not in the unit yet. So basically if you've got a, a light that doesn't have a profile, what you do is you select generic. Okay, so we're gonna enable a fixture, select, select generic. Now this thing uses three DMX channels. So we select a three channel fixture and done. Okay, so now this is programmed into the unit as a generic three channel fixture, and it tells me to set my start address to DMX channel three. Now, if we don't wanna do that, that's fine. You can go uh, press here where it says set DMX address, and you can enter in any DMX address you want, as long as it's within the one universe. Okay, but we're not gonna do that, we'll press cancel. So this is telling me to set the DMX address on this to three. But before we do that, I have to plug in a uh, transmitter. So um, let's plug this in. So this one's running off batteries. Now I'm gonna select my DMX address to channel three. Okay, so let's see if that worked. Okay, and there we go, we've got a Forza 500 responding. Now on the Forza 500, the other channel, uh, channel two, selects your effects. Okay, so I think up around there is lightning. Channel three can uh, select your triggers. So basically I can use this device to set, set off my lightning effects. Now I can do that with the controller here, with the knob, okay? But let's not get too carried away with effects at this point, let's, let's get rid of that. Okay, let's turn the effects channel off and basically just have our slider running, okay? Now something to point out here, this unit is slow to respond to DMX commands. It is not any lag in this unit. It is actually that that is slow. So if I set it down to low, it takes a little bit of time to get down there. Let's get that out of menu. So that's at 10%. Let's turn it off. If I select full blast, 
It takes a bit of time to get there, so it's, it's fading up, 88%, uh, 100%. Um, that's this unit. And the reason this is slow on its fade ups is because this unit runs off batteries. You don't want to be thumping your batteries with a 500 watt load, so um, the delay is in this. Now let's add a third fixture, let's add a sky panel. Now the sky panel uh, requires me to connect the uh, receiver, but I don't need the battery. So I'll put the battery down here where I'll step on it later. Okay, so let's now go to fixture three, which we want to set up as our sky panel. Let's uh, select our fixture, enable, go to Ari, and let's have a look at our options here. So we've got a few profiles for the sky panel. Okay, now this, the uh, mode that I like is uh, CCT and HSI. Now, interesting here, see in brackets, mode three. That's the mode you want to set the sky panel to. Okay, so let's select done. Okay, so now we've got an Ari Sky Panel, mode three, and set to DMX six. So basically you read down the side here, set my Sky Panel to mode three. So I'm gonna do that first. And now I'm gonna set my DMX address, which is DMX channel six. All right, fingers crossed, let's see how we go here we now have control of a sky panel. So we've got plus minus green, we've also got um, uh, HSI mode. Full control. Now one thing um, that's interesting with this is um, you can do something here that you can't do with the, the controls on the back of the sky panel or with a sky panel remote you can select a base level CCT, whatever you want to select, and then you can use a crossfader between your um, HSI mode and your CCT mode and basically desaturate to whatever you selected as your base, um, your base CCT, okay? So that's something you can't do with, um, with a sky panel normally. Now, this uh, controller doesn't have ultimate mode, but they do have another controller um, that basically is designed for the sky panel that operates uh, in ultimate mode. So you can pretty much, any feature on the sky panel you can select. So the one limitation with the sky panels is you can't select gels um, with the present uh, firmware that's in this, but that doesn't really bother me. We'll get into why that doesn't bother me later on in the video. Now let's have some uh, fun playing. So let's say we like this. We can save this, okay, so press number one and that is now saved as number one. Let's change it up a little bit. Let's go, I don't know, a different color. Let's go uh, full saturation. Let's um, change the color on the uh, Aladdin. Let's get that to a tungsten. Beautiful, let's save that. Save as number two. Cool, so now we can recall number one and we've got number two saved. All right, now let's get, uh, let's get really funky. All right, so let's get the uh, sky panel just to a warm color. So let's select our sky panel, let's go uh, warm. Let's have no color. Let's go basically to tungsten. Let's uh, select our, um, what's that thing called? The Aladdin. Let's go blue and let's turn off our um, Forza. Okay, so bang. Okay, and we'll save that to three. All right, so now we've got one, two, and three saved. Now, let's have some real fun. Let's go back to our main menu, and we've got a player app. So let's select our player app. Now, the player app allows me to select all the things I've got saved. But the difference is here, I've got a timer. I can do a transition, I can do a fade time. Okay, so let's go between uh, this setting here and number two, and let's do a five second transition. Okay, let's go. So how cool is that? You can set your transition times. Now, I'm just gonna do a bit of a backup and a bit of a recap before I explain the next bit. Okay, so 
Remember we had the Fader app? And in the Fader app, you can save eight scenes. We've also got the Fixture app. And in the Fixture app, you can save eight scenes. So you can save 16 scenes inside this thing in total. Now in the uh, Player app, which we were just using, you can select whether you're recalling the memory from the Fixture player or the Fader player. Okay, so this is now currently looking at stuff that's saved in the fader. If you want to have a look at scenes that were saved in the fixture app, we call that up. And we can select those. So you can save 16 scenes in this device, 16 scenes. Now here's the catch. You can only cross fade if you want to do a transition between uh, two scenes, say like this. You can only do a cross fade between uh, two scenes that are either in the, in the one group, either in the fixture app or saved in the fader app. You can't do a transition between scenes that are saved in either mode. So that's something that's, that's handy to know. You can save 16 scenes in here. So anyway, let's back up a little bit. Let's go uh, back to the fixture app. And I just wanna show you a little hack we've got here in the fixture app. So. Imagine you've used all eight scenes. You've got them all saved and you just want to save a few more. So we've got, we've done some changes, whatever it is, and we just want to save this, but we've run out of scenes. Now, when you go from the fixture app to the fader app, all the settings transfer across, okay? Now you can save this setup in the fader app. So I just press a uh, save. And that's now saved in the Fader app. Okay, so you can make changes in the Fixture app and then go to the Fader app and save them there. So you can set up 16 scenes using the Fixture app and save them uh, eight in the uh, Fixture app and eight in the Fader app. Now, one thing I've forgotten to mention in the Fixture app is down the bottom right hand corner, there is a DMX map. So that shows you what fixtures are assigned to where, and you can clearly visually see if you've got enough DMX channels left to add more fixtures. Now let's start talking about the transmission app. So before we do that, I've just got to point out that this unit has a DMX in and a DMX out. So basically the transmission app, when you select that, basically you feed a DMX signal into this thing via the DMX inlet, and it'll transmit it out. So you can plug this into a, a physical desk and it will uh, transmit that desk signals. So what if you want to run um, you know, an iPad or something like that and have this as the transmitter? Well, you can do that easy enough as well. You will need to buy another accessory though. So you need to get an art node, which is basically an Artnet to DMX Wi-Fi node. So you're probably wondering how much do these cost? Well, this one is 350 Australian dollars. So that's probably about 200 US bucks. So they're not incredibly expensive. So basically I can uh, attach this to the back of my unit. Now this thing also runs off, um, also powers off USB. So I can plug it into the same battery that I've already got um, hooked into the uh, XLUX. And then basically I'll plug the DMX into the bottom. Now you can see here, the DMX status has got a big red cross and nothing is transmitting. That's the state of play with the unit at the moment. When I plug this in, it'll then receive a DMX signal off my uh, Artnet node. So let's have a look. And there we go. We've got a status, green status light and we are transmitting. Okay, so basically now I can get an iPad with my software on it. I can um, basically use the Wi-Fi hotspot on my node, basically hook up to that, and then transmit using this. Now, here's uh, another feature that's interesting with this unit, and that is the recorder. So bear with me, this is the last feature we're talking about. Okay, so you've got a recorder app. So the recorder app basically records any DMX signal that's coming in through the DMX outlet down the bottom. So basically you can select eight recordings, so let's go, we'll record to space number one. Now we can record up to 100 seconds. Now I've been following this product for a little bit of time and every time I see a, a release note, the record time's gone up. So it used to be 40 seconds, then 80 seconds, now you can record 100 seconds. So basically let's press record. 
And you can see here it's recording 512 channels, 37 hertz. Now the maximum frequency you can record at is 44 hertz. So that's something to bear in mind when you're buying an art node. Okay, so we've recorded 12 seconds out of a possible 100. Okay, and stop. So, uh, oops, stops there. So basically you can have this hooked up to a console. You might have a job where you've got uh, a studio and you've got a big console and then you need to do some shots out at location and you can't take the big console with you, you can save those settings into this and then recall them, for example. So how do you recall? Well, basically, remember the playback app? Let's go to that, the player app. And we can select our recording and play that back. Now, um, let's go playback. So we can play it and we can pause it. And we can also loop it as well, so it keeps going over and over. So. I figure I will probably never use this um, uh, this this app, the um, the recorder app. But I had a bit more thinking, and I realised there is a situation where I might use the recorder app. Let's say in the future I'm using an iPad to drive my set, and maybe I forgot to bring my charger for my iPad, or the iPad starting to play up, or something goes wrong. Basically, you can get your key scenes from that iPad and save them into this as a backup. So that's a very, very handy feature to have. So look, I think we've covered everything in the Exalux. I can't think of anything else to talk about. Um, look, hopefully now you've got enough uh, information to decide whether this suits you or not. It's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, but for me, I love it. It's, this is gonna be the little thing I use to control a handful of lights when I've got bigger setups and, and I eventually get around to figuring, figuring out how to use iPad software, then I will use the art node and use this to transmit. So I'm Andrew Locke, see you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear.